Smartphones often need to come in big bulky cases to protect them because they're not the most durable devices out there. But the Sprint Kyocera Torque is meant to be a rugged, durable device. It's going to take a lot to break this. Challenge accepted. Let's take a look at the Kyocera Torque. When you look at the phone, obviously this isn't the bell of the ball. It's not the prettiest phone out there because it's not meant to be. It's meant to be tough and take a beating, and that it does. Uh, the material is uh, kind of hard plastic, very hard. If you ever felt recycled plastic and you see how that coarseness that it is when you touch it, that's kind of what it feels like now on the sides of the phone. On the back, uh, it has a, a softer touch because that's where your fingers are going to be touching a lot. But it has the more of that uh, kind of a pocketed rubber feel that you get that's a little smoother so it's not as bad. You might also notice that there are kind of like ribs on the back of the phone on the back plate. That's for shock absorption so when you, when you drop the phone uh, it's going to protect it a little more. It's going to lessen the impact of it when it lands on its back. Uh, you also see some exposed screws so it's very tight and it's very uh, condensed and put together when you're touching the phone. Uh, as far as uh, the back plate, it has this little locking mechanism, and when you turn it to the left, that uh, unlocks it. When you turn it back to the right, it keeps it in place and keeps everything nice and tight. And you're kind of going to need that for some things we're going to talk about later. As for the buttons on the device, on the left, you have volume up and down. You also have uh, your direct connect button. This has push to talk for Sprint. So you can just tap that button and easily uh, contact someone uh, with push to talk. On the right hand side you have a dedicated camera key so you can use this to launch the camera and take photos. And on the bottom you have your micro USB charging port. At the top is your power button. You have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack which is covered by a flap right here. So in order to access that, you got to put your finger in there and get it open. It's uh, kind of annoying, but it's necessary for the waterproof of the device. Uh, that's what keeps the water from getting in. Right here, you have the speakerphone for Direct Connect. Now, speaking of speakerphone, this has the two speakers right here. These are very loud. I mean, practically the loudest I've ever heard on a smartphone. Uh, you can actually hear the audio both for phone calls and for music practically from the other side of the apartment is very loud. Uh, you have back button, home button, and menu button. You know, uh, for the hardware button fans out there, you can have that. So clearly on the front, you can see, you might not be able to see it, but the screen is recessed uh, into the outer frame. So if this does drop on the front, it lessens the impact. It's a four inch screen. It's got WVGA resolution. So it's, it's not the best screen out there. You know, the the colors itself are good. The size isn't amazing, but the, the screen itself, it gets the job done. You can clearly read text. It's a little bit pixelated, but it's not much of a problem. Now, I mentioned this is made to endure things, and that's why you have the flaps on top of the ports. That's why everything is so nice and tight, because this is actually waterproof. It can last up to 30 minutes and up to one meter in water, so about three feet, a little over three feet. And in case you ever drop this in, like, <laughs> the toilet, I would say, or you drop this near a pool or something, or, you know, if you're in a situation where it's going to drop in water or be in the rain for a short amount of time, it will survive. You're not going to need to use the old dry rice trick to get it to work. Now, one thing is it will not work while the phone is underwater, so you can't be using this in the shower or you can't use this in the pool or something, but it'll survive. It also has dust proof uh, it also, protection. It also has salt fog or extreme conditions. So if you're in uh, very cold temperatures or very hot temperatures, places that would normally damage a phone, otherwise this phone will still last. So the Kyocera Torque is obviously meant to be a rugged phone. And you know, for among rugged phones, it does a fairly good job of trying to be a decent Android phone as well. Now this is a phone meant to take a beating, so it's kind of like you can see the original phone or what you would expect to be a phone, that kind of 
shaped uh, stretch oval look to it. And then it has this hardcore casing around it. So it's kind of like uh, if you got an OtterBox with your phone, except in this case, your OtterBox is kind of built directly into the phone. So you don't need to buy another case because your phone is a case itself. And you might also notice that when I was talking about the phone, I didn't mention a earpiece towards the top. That's because there isn't one. Kyocera actually deployed this uh, thing that's a little unique called Smart Sonic. Basically, the waves pass up through the phone and into your eardrum directly. So rather than having the sound come out of an earpiece, it kind of passes waves to your hearing. Uh, the results I had were kind of mixed. Uh, I was able to hear what the other person was saying, and it was a decent call, but there was some weird staticky thing sometimes. I'm not sure if that's the phone itself or the network. Because yes, this does support Sprint's uh, HD voice technology, but only if you're calling another HD phone. Yes, this has 4G LTE, but LTE is very limited. There isn't a, an LTE site within anywhere near me for me even to drive to test it. And I'm pretty much stuck on 3G and 3G is kind of slow on Sprint. So when you buy this phone, keep that in mind. So uh, your, your network isn't going to be the best out there. That's just something to consider. And that's just something you're going to have to deal with at some point. Now, your phone calls won't be perfect, but with the direct call, the direct connect, you will have a very easy push to talk service. Sprint pretty much built it in, so when I press the button, I can uh, call someone very easily. And aside from that, they've actually built a direct connect into the phone app. So here's the standard phone. I have my contacts that I can call easily. But I can also go to the direct connect section to have a, a history of people that I've contacted. So I can do it that way, or I can go directly to the Direct Connect app when I tap on that, and then I start initiating a call. Okay, now you hear that echo. Uh, see, this is the push to talk interface. It's built into the phone. It's very standard, and it actually worked pretty cool. Uh, I tested it out with someone who was about five miles away from me. They were able to hear everything. It wasn't an issue. So Sprint's push to talk service is fine. Uh, and with this very loud speaker and with the great microphone that it has to begin with, when you're using push to talk, you should be able to hear everyone uh, in the loud settings. And if you bother to use push to talk, you'll probably be in a loud setting or you'll need something reliable. And even on the weak 3G network that I've experienced in this area, I didn't have a problem with the push to talk service. When you run the benchmarks on this phone, you'll see that it's not the hottest thing out there. You know, it's actually behind the HTC One X, which is released a generation ago. So this phone is going to be kind of old in terms of that. But it's not just the hardware that's old. It's the software as well. You might have noticed that this is actually Android 4.0, not 4.1, not 4.2, 4.0, ice cream sandwich. So it's going to be old. So you're, you're going to miss out on certain things. You notice there's no Google Now here. There's not going to be the faster uh, animations that you get with Jelly Bean. Uh, this phone, there were some stuttering uh, at times. It was able to deal with kind of the basics, but it wasn't the best experience out there. It's solid. It's okay, but it's not great. And you typically you want to see technology push forward, but this isn't exactly a phone that pushes forward on the software front. Here you see you have the swipe keyboard. So if I want to type a sentence, I can do that by dragging my fingers along and letting it pick the words. Uh, you can also switch out uh, other keyboards, obviously, but this is just an option for one thing you can do. On the software front, there are some other things that they, that Kyocera has added that are actually pretty cool. I'll give them credit for. For one instance, is Eco Mode, which is kind of like an automatic profile creation that can help you save energy. So if your phone gets to a certain level, uh, turn the brightness down. You can change the wallpaper. You can change rotation. And when you turn the eco mode on, it's designed to extend the battery life of the phone. They also have something in here called Maximizer, which kind of does the same thing. They're both built on extending battery life on the phone. In terms of bloatware, there's not much. Uh, there's Sprint ID, there's Sprint Zone. Uh, there's Polaris Office Viewer, not the document editor. So you can view Microsoft Office documents, but you can't edit them with this app. There's 
Very limited bloatware on this, but unfortunately, you can't disable them. Typically in Android, if you want to have an app not appear or to not run anymore, you can go into app info and you can choose to disable it. That's not an option here, unfortunately, with any of the preloaded software. Another area that Kyocera changed things around is the camera. Now the camera is kind of generic. It's five megapixel rear with flash included. And on the front you have a 1.3 megapixel camera for video chat or self portraits. Now the camera is not the greatest like I said, but they've made some changes to the software that I actually kind of like, you know, it kind of it improves your chances of getting a semi-decent photo. Uh, right with the interface, they've made some changes. Uh, here you have flash enabled on and off. You can turn it. If you're recording a video, you can keep it on at the same time. Uh, right here, when you tap it, you can change the resolution of the image. You can also change the shooting mode. It has continuous shooting, panorama in case you want to go around. It has smile detection. Uh, you can have some uh, filters with effects, or you can do HDR, which will take a low picture, a high picture, and then balance them out into a, a better looking photo. Uh, you can also go into settings to change how you focus, shoot, include GPS information, uh, blink detection, change the white balance. The white balance doesn't do much correction uh, if you leave it on audio auto but if you're under fluorescent lights or you know you're outside you can easily switch between the two uh, with daylight you get a little of a more of a warmer glow than you do if you have on incandescent so why buy this phone I'm not gonna lie to you it's not the best phone on the market if you're someone looking for the latest toy run in the complete opposite direction because this is not a toy this is not cutting edge at all this is a tank. It's designed for people who are accident prone, who work in extreme conditions, and they need a phone that's gonna be durable and that's gonna be reliable. Uh, in terms of the space of rugged phones, you can actually do a lot worse than the Kyocera Torque. I actually kind of liked it. I, even though I heard a little bit of static when I was using the SmartSonic receiver, I actually was very able, uh, able to hear calls very well, and I was pleased by that. I love the volume of the speaker. It's not crystal clear, but in terms of making sure you understand what someone is saying on the other line when you turn on speakerphone or you're in a loud area, it's very good and reliable in that case. Now, if you're someone looking for a great camera or the latest software, this isn't going to be the phone for you. You're going to want to try and get an iPhone or Samsung Galaxy or Blackberry Z10 or Nokia Lumia 920. Those are the phones for you. But in terms of people that go hiking, work in constructions, live in extreme conditions, uh, this phone will actually get the job done for you. The Kyocera Torque has last generation specs but it's mostly reliable in terms of performance. It has two generational software, and that's a big letdown. But again, if you're someone who's not looking for the latest software, you should be okay. This is for people that are gonna drop the phone a lot, that are gonna be in extreme conditions or adverse conditions, and don't wanna worry about damaging their phone. With the Kyocera Torque, you can drop it, just like I did, and not even care, because it's supposed to last and that's actually like the 10th or 15th time I dropped it. But you know, the phone's still working. Let me check for that. All right, All right the battery lock stayed on, screen still unlocks, and buttons still respond. So if you're looking for something that can take a punishment, Kyocera Torque for Sprint might actually be a good job for you.